If you were to ask me what I view as being the best Sonic game, there'd be a couple that come to mind. The Sonic Adventure titles, Sonic Generations, Colors, or pretty much any of the main classic titles that come after the original. However, if I had to narrow it down to a single game, I'd say the best Sonic experience is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Sonic 3 and Knuckles has everything that makes the Sonic series appealing in a single, well-made package. The level design complements the playstyles of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. The story is among the most well-written from any Sonic game ever published, and the soundtrack boasts some of the most memorable music from any game I've ever played. With all that said though, we're not talking about Sonic 3 today. While Sonic 3 may be what I view as the best Sonic game, it's never been my favorite. That title belongs to a more divisive entry. Despite its flaws, Sonic CD is my favorite Sonic game ever made. I had a strange fixation on this game as a kid which quickly followed me into adulthood. There's just something so interesting about this game to me. The art direction, the characters, the story. Everything about the way Sonic CD was made works to give it a vibe that no other Sonic game has ever managed to recreate. A vibe that I've always been extremely fascinated by and inspired me to make the video you're watching right now. In this video, I have no intention of trying to convince you why this is the best Sonic game. Instead, I want to talk about everything that makes it so special to me, so you can hopefully appreciate the finer details that makes this one of Sonic's most unique games ever made. So, without further ado, let's delve into it. Unlike the other classic Sonic games which used a very similar yet effective approach to their gameplay, Sonic CD stood out with its more experimental approach to both its mechanics as well as the level design. This game took everything that made Sonic fundamentally work and added new elements onto it which completely changed how it played compared to previous titles. And this is immediately noticeable when we see how the zones have been laid out. While some previous installments like Sonic 2 and 3 had a heavier emphasis on using Sonic's abilities to get through zones quickly, CD changes that by having the zones be built entirely around exploration. The zones are massive and filled to the brim with unique quirks and gimmicks that make traversing them extremely interesting interesting. Instead of using Sonic's trademark speed to reach the end as quickly as possible, we use it in this game to reach many areas in these massive labyrinth-esque zones that we wouldn't be able to normally. And while I understand that this approach to the level design may be unappealing to some diehard Sonic fans, I love it so much. I've always been a huge fan of any platformers that emphasize exploration, with a lot of the fun to me being what I'm able to find when looking through every nook and cranny the game has to offer. And this game does this well. Even on multiple playthroughs, I find that there's always new things to discover in CD, whether it be new pathways, enemies, or entire level gimmicks just waiting to be found. Take, for example, one of the more experimental zones in the game, Wacky Workbench. This zone, as well as having one of the weirdest names and gimmicks tied to it, is full of different diverging paths and secrets for the player to find. There's tons of hidden passageways through walls, scalable platforms which can only be accessed through bouncing off the floor, and these weird crushers which seem like they'll kill you at first, only to lead you to new portions of the map that weren't accessible before. Zones like this one are so much fun to me, because I feel like I have a massive open space to run around in just to discover whatever cool little details I missed the last time I played it. And the game gives us a lot of tools to be able to explore these maps effectively. Take for example, Sonic's new ability introduced in this game, the Super Peel Out. Using this ability, Sonic is able to reach his top speed from a complete standstill, allowing for easier exploration of areas that require a lot of speed to reach. I always loved this mechanic existing alongside the classic Spin Dash, because I feel like it gives Sonic a pair of options to gain speed that have similar, yet very situational uses. The Peel Out allows Sonic to move much faster than the Spin Dash, sure, but by using it you lose the safety that the Spin Dash normally provides you with. The Spin Dash is a much more generally useful option, but sometimes it just doesn't give you the speed you need to reach trickier areas in the massive zones that CD boasts. 
both of these mechanics have genuine uses throughout the game, and it's up to the player a lot of the time to figure out which one is better suited for whatever scenario they find themselves in. This is something I really love about this game. The level layout as well as our two tools we're given in Sonic's kit make it so that exploration is almost entirely speed-based. We don't slowly trudge through these levels to try and find whatever we're looking for. No, instead we zip around the different ramps and obstacles using the new abilities we're given to reach new locations never before possible. I love this repurposing of Sonic's speed to make for a more unique, yet equally entertaining experience. It makes going through these levels feel completely different than any other classic game in the series, and yet it still has all the fundamentals that stops it from veering too far away from what makes Sonic enjoyable in the first place. And if that use of Sonic speed wasn't interesting enough, there is another way that CD utilizes it to make the experience all the more interesting. A mechanic which has easily become the most iconic part of the entire game. Time travel. By running past either one of these past or future posts and maintaining a consistent level of speed, Sonic is able to travel through time to the past, present, or either the good or bad future of any zone. This mechanic is the backbone of Sonic CD, with all the zones being designed with it in mind. The mechanics of time travel is actually what incentivizes us the player to explore the levels in the first place, with the primary way we achieve the good ending being to find these different generators and destroy them in the past. Doing this will unlock the zone's good future, making it so all the critters are able to run around again and the color is restored to the zone. Aside from how this mechanic incentivizes the exploration I love from Sonic CD, there's something else that comes from time travel that I've been absolutely obsessed with since I revisited the game, and that's how it conveys the tone and story through both its visuals as well as its music. See, I feel like while most classic Sonic games do have both a good and bad ending tied to them, there isn't really much that personally invests the player in getting those aside from completion. In Sonic 2, the only thing that changes is the fact that we unlock Super Sonic, as well as the fact that we get a slightly different ending cutscene. In Sonic 3 and Knuckles, we get quite a bit in the form of an entirely new final boss stage, but even then we can still complete the game without ever having seen that and not necessarily feel like we've gotten a bad ending. When playing through those games, I never felt emotionally invested in which ending I got, because it felt like the only reason you had to go for those endings was either for completion, or a little extra in terms of content. The time travel mechanic in Sonic CD completely changes this for me. By having the ability to time travel to the future of each zone in Sonic CD, the game actively shows you the fate that is going to happen to that zone unless you choose to act against it. The normally bright and colorful zones we get used to are suddenly devoid of all that color and life, which made them appealing in the first place. Everything is drowned in this horrible gray and brown color, and even the machinery which infected the zone seems to be broken and abandoned, like Robotnik himself no longer had use for the machines and left the place in a state of disrepair. On top of that, the game makes a point before every single Robotnik boss fight to start you in the future right before that fight happens, showing you the fate that you are actively allowing to become of that zone. When I played through this game again recently, it genuinely felt awful to fight these Robotnik fights in the bad future. Every victory over him felt bittersweet. Sure, I defeated the boss, but it didn't matter. He already did the damage he planned to do in that zone, and no matter what I did, there's no way I could fix it. It was the first time I ever played a Sonic game where I was driven to get the good ending not for the sake of content or completion, but rather because I had become extremely emotionally invested in trying to stop the zones I love from becoming lifeless wastelands. When you destroy all the generators in a zone, there's a feeling of genuine relief in doing that, because you know that the horrible future you saw wasn't going to happen anymore to that area. Instead of going into the Robotnik fights feeling like you're fighting for a lost cause, you instead go in there knowing that Robotnik is the only thing left to deal with. The once dark futures that accompany these fights are now bright and colorful and full of life. Animals bounce around everywhere, the music is fun and fast-paced, and even some of Robotnik's contraptions now appear goofier and more colorful than usual. 
This was the only Sonic game I've ever played where actively trying to go for the good ending felt meaningful to me. It has such an emphasis on showing you the consequences of your actions that it feels like you have to do something about it. For that reason, it's genuinely the only Sonic game where I will always try to get the good ending to it, no matter the playthrough I'm doing, because I always feel like I'm not truly beating the game unless I do so. All of this storytelling is able to be conveyed through the simple use of the game's time travel mechanic, making it feel like a core part of the game that it would sorely miss without it. But, with all that said, it isn't just the time travel or the level design which I feel perfectly tells the story of Sonic CD. No, there is another aspect to this game which I feel masterfully goes hand in hand with the time travel, and that's the soundtrack. I feel like the soundtrack of Sonic CD is one of the most discussed and argued pieces of the entire game. Not because there are a lot of people who think the soundtrack is good or bad though, but because there are actually two different soundtracks you can play through the game with. Yeah, for whatever reason, Sonic CD in the US was released with a completely different soundtrack than the Japanese version, leading many fans to argue about which one is better. Now, I of course have my own preferences on the soundtrack as well, however, I feel like both perfectly fit what the game is going for in completely different ways. The Japanese soundtrack perfectly suits the tone of a classic Sonic experience. It's fast-paced, light-hearted, and extremely funky sounding for certain zones and bosses. It's the kind of music that fills the player with energy, making them want to go as fast as possible through the bright and colorful zones it plays in. This is the soundtrack I've always had a preference for personally. It's so full of energy and life, and it maintains that feeling no matter which version of the music you listen to, whether it be past, present, or future. I will say though that while the Japanese soundtrack is definitely more enjoyable to listen to overall, where the US soundtrack really shines is how it conveys the story of Sonic CD through music. The US soundtrack is far more atmospheric than the Japanese, oftentimes favoring a more dark and sinister tone over the upbeat vibes I was just praising. The music heavily shifts between the past, present, and future, often emphasizing different instruments to convey the tone of that time period. Take for example, my favorite piece of music from the US soundtrack, Metallic Madness. While I've always been a bigger fan of the Japanese version of this song, there's no denying how perfectly the US version fits this zone. The present version of the soundtrack feels like music being made entirely by the very machinery around you, with almost all the instruments being electric. The only organic sounds we can hear through the machinery is the sound of a bongo which occasionally plays alongside it, as if the two instruments are constantly fighting for control over the song. It gives off the feeling that while this zone seems to be lost to the machinery that's taken it over, there's still hope, still a chance no matter how slim, that Sonic can bring back what was taken. Because despite all the damage that was done to this zone, there's still something there worth saving. And depending on our actions throughout the game, when we finally travel to the future to confront Robotnik, the music once again reflects the fate that we allowed to happen to the zone. The good future version of this music shows us how we were able to reverse the dire situation that Metallic Madness Zone found itself in. The electric instruments are still present, much like the machinery in the zone. However, the bongos that were originally conflicting with those instruments are now front and center, showing that the planet was able to heal despite all the damage that was done to it. The bad future version of this music is the exact opposite, showing us how that faint bit of life the zone had left had now completely faded, leaving only a desolate wasteland. The electric instruments have now completely consumed the song, with the sound of the bongos only being faint and drowned out by the machinery. Whatever chance this world had is gone, and the music reflects that by overwhelming you with the sound of electric instruments and machinery, with the only organic sound being faintly heard in the background as if to remind you of what could have been done to stop this.
As I said before, both soundtracks for CD are amazing in their own regards. The Japanese soundtrack is perfect for a fun, fast-paced experience that makes the player want to quickly zip their way through all the zones it has to offer. On the other hand, though, the American soundtrack perfectly presents the story of the game through its tone and instruments. No matter which soundtrack you prefer, they both have strengths which complement the whole of Sonic CD, making either feel like a valid choice to play through the game with. And while I'm on the subject of these two soundtracks, there's something else I find really interesting about them. That being how they coincidentally play into what I view as being the core theme of Sonic CD. That being duality. Sonic CD is a game which is absolutely littered with this theme everywhere you look. The two soundtracks I mentioned, the good and bad futures, the conflict between industrialization and nature. Everything in Sonic CD seems to be built around this theme of duality. Everything has a mirror, an opposite which opposes them built into the game. And the reason I bring this up is because Sonic does too. In order to fit this game's theme, Sega created a villain who I view as being the greatest rival to Sonic ever made, and that's Metal Sonic. Sonic, dead or alive, is mine. If you were to ask most Sonic fans who they view as being Sonic's best rival, I feel like the most common answer you'll hear is either Knuckles or Shadow. And while I feel like these two characters do fulfill that role well, my answer to that question has always been Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic, to me, has always been the perfect rival for Sonic, not only for his ability to perfectly match everything Sonic can do, but also because I feel like he perfectly represents everything Sonic doesn't want to be. Sonic as a character is supposed to represent freedom, and his objective throughout each of the classic games is to stop an industrialist force from destroying the world he cares about. Metal Sonic is the perfect mirror of this idea. He's an emotionless machine that's only capable of doing what his creator tells him to do, and his purpose is to destroy everything Sonic is trying to protect. Throughout the games, we see Sonic doing everything he can to save the animals Robotnik is trying to capture, and yet in CD we clearly see Metal depicted as crushing one of them beneath his feet. Every trait that defines Sonic as a character, Metal is the antithesis of. This disparity between the two of them can even be seen in their designs. While the two of them share a similar likeness, there's smaller nuances in how they look that convey a completely different character. Sonic is much rounder and far more expressive in all of his iterations, with his personality clearly being visible the moment you look at him. Metal, on the other hand, has a design full of sharp points and jagged lines, with a face that's only capable of giving a cold, dead stare. These characters may have a similar likeness to one another, however the small quirks that make their designs unique portray completely different personalities. And yet despite the massive disparity between these two, that effort was still made to make them similar enough in appearance to mirror one another. It feels like Metal is supposed to represent everything Sonic could be in Robotnik's eyes. A machine capable of using all those powers and all that speed not for the purpose of foiling his plans, but for the purpose of serving him with no questions asked. And for that reason, I feel like Metal Sonic is truly the best rival Sonic could ever have. Knuckles may be able to meet Sonic's speed with his strength, and Shadow may mirror all of Sonic's abilities while having new ones of his own, but neither of them truly feel like they rival Sonic in the personal way Metal Sonic does. Everything that defines Sonic as a character, Metal is the antithesis of while also being able to perfectly match his physical abilities. He rivals him in both power, as well as in his goals, making it so that Sonic doesn't just want to surpass him, he has to. To me, this makes Metal Sonic not only the perfect rival for Sonic, but also the perfect villain for Sonic CD. In a game defined by duality, the only villain that makes sense is one that perfectly mirrors the protagonist in every way, and Metal Sonic accomplishes this perfectly. Even in his boss fight, which I personally feel is given way too much flack, we see this idea explored by having it be a race. 
At the time Sonic CD was made, there was one trait that defined Sonic better than any other, and that was his speed. In a series defined by the speed of its protagonist, the perfect rival will be one who puts that trademark speed to the test, which we very clearly see with how Metal's fight is set up in Stardust Speedway. Could the fight have been a bit longer? Sure. Could it have had other mechanics going on? Maybe it could have, yeah. But I feel like that doesn't take away from what makes this fight interesting. That being how it's the first and only time in the classic era that we see a villain test Sonic on the one trait he's known best for. And since we're on the topic of characters introduced in CD, I'd like to take a moment before ending this discussion to talk about my personal favorite Sonic character, Amy Rose. Amy's been my favorite character for as long as I can remember, and it's not for some crazy in-depth reason like why I love Metal Sonic. She's just an adorable, wholesome character who makes me happy every single time I see her, and it just gives me another huge reason to love CD knowing that this was the game that introduced her to the series. It's not a big thing, but it's just a nice little detail that always makes me happy to revisit the game every now and then. And also, these CD cutscenes they added for her in Origins are the most adorable thing I've ever seen, just look at her! While it may not be the best Sonic game, Sonic CD has always stood out to me as my favorite in the entire series. It's an interesting title unlike any other, which experimented with new mechanics and level designs to bring us a new and exciting experience. Every mechanic introduced in this game is one that I love, with many of them being explored in ways that give the game a level of depth that I really enjoy seeing compared to other titles in the series. If this game isn't your cup of tea, I understand that. This game was very different in how it chose to present itself and veered very heavily off the path that was set by the other titles in the series, which is justifiably off-putting to many diehard fans of the series. If you watched to the end of this video and found yourself disagreeing with anything I said, I'd love to hear what your favorite Sonic game is in the comments below. I feel like there's so many unique perspectives and opinions in this fanbase worth discussing, so I'd love to see if this video was able to spark any of that. Anyway though, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. The Sonic series is one I've always been extremely passionate about, so being able to make a video like this was very exciting for me. I hope to see you again soon in whatever my next project ends up being. Goodbye for now. Alright, I've had enough. It's time to put an end to this pasture. Put an end to this? What the hell are you talking about? Don't act like I don't see what you're doing here, Pasta. I can see it plain as day. When you said you didn't want to focus solely on my objects anymore, I got that. I was able to get over it. But what you're doing on your channel right now, it goes against everything you said you wanted to discuss on here. First, it was that Mickey Mouse game, then it was that funny little arcade game, and now this? Have you lost all the passion for the horror genre I thought you had? What? No, I just want to talk about Sonic. Y you do realize that I can enjoy other stuff than the horror genre, even if it isn't my main thing, right? Don't be ridiculous, Pastra. Horror is what the people are subscribing for. Horror is what drives you to work on what you do. To not talk about horror on here is blasphemy! Okay, but what if I really want to talk about a Sonic game anyways? Are you saying I should force myself to talk about horror instead? I feel like that kind of goes against the whole idea of what this channel's about. Why not do both? What are you talking about? Well, seeing as you're a cowardly little worm, I'm sure you'll be able to find horror even in media that isn't made for it. Media like this silly little Sonic game you've been ranting about. You're kidding, right? This is a kid's game, dude! How the hell am I supposed to find horror elements in a game like Sonic CD? Oh, I'm sure you'll manage. In fact, how about I make a little deal with you? If you can make a video about the horrors hidden behind this game, a real, genuine one, I'll leave you alone about it. But if not, I'll just keep pestering you till you do. You know what? Fine! Sure, why not? 
Sounds like it could be interesting anyway. I guess to anyone who's still watching, stay tuned for when I decide to go hunting for what makes this game scary. If there is anything. Goodbye for now.